Let's, I think, start with... Nope. Live. We're live. We're live. Cool. Welcome. This is uh, the Cage Corner. I'm here. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm from the channel Flick Fanatics. Is and Matt? Yep. Matt, Matthew, M-A-T, whatever. I, I was here with a complete stranger. Like, we're doing chat roulette right now. I have yep. no idea who this man is. It's time to unbutton the shirt. Oh, God. Just Hold kidding. On. So, uh, Zach, introduce yourself. Welcome. I'm so glad that you wanted to do this and that you came up with this idea and that we're doing it right now. Yeah. Introduce yourself. Okay, so if you don't know who I am on the Flix Fanatics channel, I, <laughs> I am Zach. I run what used to be called the Zach vs. the Blu-ray Mountain channel. It is now called Cavern of Terror. I do a whole bunch of horror movie reviews and horror movie hauls and stuff like that. I hate the word hauls pickups and stuff like that and i've been on youtube for five years so it, it, it's been a while <laughs> nice that's good dude thanks for um thanks for hanging out with me for doing this video i'm super excited about what we're going to talk about today um and if uh you're on our channel we don't have a huge following on this channel but if you are here watching or listening uh definitely check out Zach's channel. I'll have a, a link down below, and I hope you watch it because he's going to be doing a Halloween review series right now, and it's already off to a great start because those are some some cool movies. At least the first two in my book. Oh yeah, I did the first two, and I just got the third one in the mail today uh, from Amazon. I'm also doing the Insidious franchise in reverse order. So, oh, that's good. That, that's a good way to do it, actually. I mean. Well, I had a, I made a mistake and reviewed the fourth one first, so there are some order issues that I'm going to change in the playlist, but I am editing my Insidious 3 review right now. Cool. I like those movies a lot. Yep. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah, me too. It's, uh, yeah, it's, you know, what else can you say about it except it's Nicolas Cage time. It's Cage Corner. Oh, it's time for the cage. <laughs> oh, my God. We get really weird around here, just like you. <laughs> and crazy. We're gonna have some freakouts. I'm so excited. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk about Mom and Dad, one of his newer movies. Oh my God, Mom and Dad was so good. I'm I'm just gonna tell you right now that me and Matt have been talking. Matt and I have been talking about Mom and Dad for like a month, and even longer than that when we were still trying to, you know, look for a trailer. Yeah, and hearing that it was getting a lot of attention at TIFF and mm -hmm. just horror movie like websites were going crazy about this movie yep I, exactly uh, i rented it the other day i watched it the night i rented it and it was awesome really 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 good i'm so glad to hear that yeah exactly dude we've been talking about it. it's been more than a month we've been we've been talking about this one maybe two plus months i would this say movie, it's weird because this movie was supposed to come out in september of last year yep so it, it got put back a lot. Yeah, and pushed back a lot. Exactly. And you got um you got half of the crank director visionary, uh Brian Taylor directing. Uh and I think he wrote this as well. I wanna say yeah. I wanna say he wrote some of it, right? I think um, the main story idea was his. Cool, yeah, and and it shows, you know, it's it's totally it's one of those off the wall, bonker, crazy movies that um it's just so much fun from start to finish because at the beginning you're playing the waiting game, right? Mm -hmm. You're kind of like, okay, I see where this is going, and then you wait right till it starts, and then it really the, about the about the halfway point is when it just goes crazy. No, I'm not gonna lie, the beginning was a little slow, and I was like, when is this gonna get going? But fortunately, we had the cinematography of Daniel Pearl, which is just gorgeous. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I'm a technical, like, I love the technical aspect. We were just talking about that before we went live. Mm -hmm. uh, my aspiration to become a cinematographer is still there. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And, and no, and you're, and you're completely right. Because even though it might take a little more time in the beginning to develop the characters and kind of lay some seeds for the rest of the movie, even though it does that, the payoffs are all there along the way to make it really fun throughout. So I feel like, there's just little things you catch kind of in the opening when 
when you when you're introduced to Brent Nicholas Cage's character and the way he's playing this white suburban dad and mm -hmm. it's so good it's he nails the part like it, it's he's perfect he's it, great in this movie oh they wrote to his strengths this for mom was, and dad this role was made for Nicholas Cage you can tell mm -hmm. and I had read I I shared this post on Instagram with you that uh conversation that he had with kevin smith about you know what he loved what uh -huh. Nicolas cage loved he loved horror and he loved comedy and kevin smith's favorite performance from him is uh well in uh valley girl wild at heart oh yeah yeah, yeah. valley girl he loves valley girl and he loves vampire's kiss <laughs> yeah he just loves vampire's kiss too horror comedy and he loves doing it so what do you think you're gonna get in mom and dad a great spot on Nicolas cage performance and especially when you when you pair that up with the crank visual style and and sort of I I, I, I should look it up. Does um, does mom and dad have the same editor as crank? Because they're both very much of that high energy, quick cuts. You know, um, there's well, some great use of what's up. I think that's part of Brian Taylor's style is very quick editing. And you can tell that in, especially in Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Yes, which there we go. Another Nick Cage movie. We're at two right now in the Cage Corner. Mom and Dad, Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Uh, Nicholas Cage stars in both. Brian Taylor directs and I, both. And, and I will tell you, if you watch the trailer, I know what a lot of people think of spirit of vengeance and i might be part of that party and it's not that great of a film <laughs> but if you watch the trailer for that movie it looks awesome like it looks amazing it's nowhere near as good as the trailer dude you're so right when they when they released that trailer and they had brian and the other guy what was the other crank guy's name um his brother um i forget his brother's name Ah, uh, yeah, it's either some way they're brothers. Yeah, but either way, they. I remember that they did a little little uh, intro to the Ghost Rider trailer when they were working on it, and that was like one of the first times I had heard they were making a, another movie, a reboot, a sequel, whatever you want to call it. And I'm like, "Huh, this is weird. They're gonna do a Ghost Rider movie with the Crank directors and Nicolas Cage." And all I had in my head was the first Ghost Rider movie. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be weird. It isn't all that bad. But then I didn't think about their style and their way of filmmaking. And then I saw the trailer and I was like, this looks nuts. It's like, this looks insane. like the best the kind scene? of... Yeah. The and... car scene is insane. But here's the thing. Even though the movie, Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance, isn't the best comic movie, it's still a good time and i think it's safe to say they use nick cage to his strengths once again or before mom and dad mom and dad once again the crank director they i think they used him pretty well he had a freak out where i think he, he kind of goes against the wall and he's like oh uh, you stick it so yeah dude <laughs> And then, and then, and yeah dude exactly and then he's like he's like he's knocking you know he's talking about the the, the spirit the of door. vengeance yeah yep. it's great it's and then great. when he's riding down the the thing and his face is doing all the crazy <laughs> stuff that was that was wild man it is crazy i just think man if they put him just put him on a leash with the with the script of that movie i think a lot could have been cut out of that like there was a lot that should yeah. be done in the movie and was totally because how long how long is is uh, Spirit of Vengeance? That's got to be a long one, man. Like for, it was for the type of movie, it's probably a hundred minutes, I would say. Right. For but some reason, I thought it was one twenty. Yeah, let me see here. I got it pulled up right here. Ninety-five minutes. So that's with credits. We're looking at maybe eighty-seven, ninety like it moves, minutes. It moves at a quick pace. It, it really moves. Does move it, at a quick pace. It moves fast enough, but like you said, if they kind of put the script on a leash and dialogue on a leash and cut some stuff, you could have probably made that movie like eighty minutes, maybe eighty-five minutes, and nah, it probably wouldn't have been received better. But I. I mean, I think that's a fun movie, dude. It's got a 1.9 average out of five on Letterboxd. Oh, it's it would be a, it would be a solid two and a half or three for me. I think Spirit of Vengeance. 
when I when I look at a movie subjectively, I look at everything. I mean, I look at the technical aspects of a film as well as the enjoyment factor. That's why I told you the other day, I absolutely despise it when I hear someone say that they hate a movie. Do you really hate the movie or do you hate hate the entertainment factor of the movie? Right, no, and I agree with you 100%. It's, I, for me, I'm just, I might not like something, but I'm not going to say I hate it. And I feel like if, if your movie, I tell Tim this a lot when we do VOD pod, is that if your movie crosses the finish line, if you get from point A to point B finish line of your movie, I think you deserve a good, you know, you know, there's some reward to be had. You finish the movie. That's a hard thing to do. Even if the movie isn't that great. I mean, if you made a movie, that's more than a lot of people can say. That's it what is, I think. This is months out of people's lives, sometimes years. I mean, I just do movie reviews and sometimes skits at the beginning, and that's a lot of time. That was my first kicking one. And that's just no a, a lot of time goes into it. And just to have somebody say, oh, I hate that movie. Well, there were a lot of people involved with that movie just doing their job. No, exactly, dude. And I think that's going to be, like, unfortunately, I think that's just a thing. And unfortunately, big time, I think Nick Cage has that issue that there's people that inherently hate Nick Cage. They think he's a horrible actor, but they don't actually – you know, take into account all the different types of roles he's had over the years, the different types of characters he's played, the different types of filmmakers that he's worked with, the types of movies that he's starred in. I'm he's been, he's worked with Scorsese. He's worked with. Uh, yeah, bring, are you talking about bringing out the dead? Uh, kick ass? Yeah, dude, kick ass is. Ooh. I, I'm trying to start to think about my favorite movies of his. And even though he's not the lead in kick ass, he's still a show stealer and easily one of probably my favorite part of the movie. I call uh, that a quintess I call it a quintessential Nicolas Cage performance because you get everything from Nicolas Cage in that movie. You get absolutely everything you can want. You get humor, you get drama, you get action. He basically plays Ben Affleck's Batman. Yeah in dude. that movie. Yeah, he did like he did like an Adam West but but Ben Affleck Batman. Oh yeah. Because oh, yeah. of his voice as the Adam West, but the brutality and badassness of Ben Affleck's Batman. Oh, Nick Cage did it first, scene. you know? The warehouse, the scene, warehouse scene is awesome. I used that scene uh, as a study tool in one of my editing classes to show how effective that, that style of jump cut was for what they were doing. Uh, it's an amazing scene, dude. And I mean, if you take the warehouse scene where Big Daddy's taking out those guys. You know what's really similar? The Ben Affleck warehouse scene where he's taking out all those yeah. guys. <laughs> I love it. I love it, dude. That's a good connection because, I mean, yeah, it's like dozen, dozen, dozen guys, you know, or something. Ben Affleck, it was probably like two dozen guys. But, but dude, Nick Cage, Nick Cage as Big Daddy, kind of reminding you of Batman, taking out a bunch of dudes with a shotgun and a knife and a pistol – and then he freaking lights the warehouse on fire at the end. So good. I mean, that Kick scene, ass. Matthew Vaughn always has those scenes too. Like that scene from Kick-Ass is like always going to be implanted in my brain. And then you go over to Kingsman and you got your fucking church scene with... The church uh, scene is oh, just hilariously good. Oh my God, yeah. It's and it's crazy. like... The editing is amazing. Exactly, dude. And when you see how they put the effects in there and mm -hmm. how, how tight of a scene it is, it's just unreal. Unreal. Well, weren't we talking about mom and dad? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, then we, we went off into Ghost Rider and then we went into more Nick Cage. But um, Let's finish up mom and dad and then we'll get into full-on Nicolas Cage. There's right. one thing that I wanted to talk about with mom and dad that I don't know if a lot of people noticed. Do you remember the scene where the two kids, the Ann Winters and her boyfriend, locked Selma Blair in the closet? Yeah. The scene where she takes the coat hanger and she pushes it out through the door? Mm -hmm. How is that not a homage to Halloween? Halloween? Yeah, 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 dude. <laughs> Just on the reverse side where she's right. She's exactly. the killer. Exactly. But it's like 
Did you not notice that? Am I the only one that noticed oh, no, that? Dude, no, you're I, not. I, I at least thought about that. You know what I mean? Like, cause, cause like you said, it's kind of a role reversal, but, mm -hmm. um, but I still really liked that. That was a cool, like kind of funny scene to begin with. Cause it's like, they're trying to hold her shut, you know? And then, right. and they're kind of talking and not really like worried about that. It was just, I was, I, I liked that scene overall. But we talk about how good Nicolas Cage is in this movie and we'll get to the pool table scene. Selma Blair is also really good. And so is, and I was telling you about this earlier, I want her for Edgefield. Ann Winters was awesome. She was really good, too. And this, this is the first thing I've ever seen her in. So, Because that one of the things for me was, this is also the first thing I've seen her in. And it was, um, at first, I don't like her much. I'm like, ah, oh, she's really bratty kind of teenage daughter but then the more i watched it it was all the you're you're muted you were oh, sorry you sorry said. yeah sorry about that um no it was like it was cool because i <laughs> you muted it again you're still muted yeah i don't know why it's doing that um Yeah, I was like, "What the fuck?" It keeps doing that to me, man. Um, yeah, but no, you end up, you end up like, yeah, no. I mean, my connection's pretty good, actually. I mean, your your cables for your mic. I think I'm good. I think it's good now. But uh, yeah, but by the end of it, I liked her a lot more than I did at the start. So I was like, "Oh, yeah. she's not so bad." The boy was good too. The young son. Yeah. Like he was definitely better than the kid in Pay the Ghost. That kid was terrible. He was so bad. Oh, I'm sorry. And I and I would like wish no harm or anything on young actors or even older actors. But that kid was just bad. I'm sorry. He was really bad. Like that movie could have been good if the kid was better. Unfortunately, I feel like that's true with a lot of horror movies too, is like some of the child acting can really bring a movie down if it's not half believable i mean pay the ghost was like that movie wanted to be a horror movie but it it really wasn't it, in the slightest scary for me no i um, think if that director tried horror again later in another setting he could probably make a good horror film there is potential there there is potential with that director to make a good horror film someday it's not gonna be right now but someday <laughs> Right, I mean, because the, uh, what do you call it? The um, Pay the Ghost itself, it had, like, good production value. The sound was good. Like, it had a budget to be made. It's for a psychological movie or a horror movie, and I feel like it just didn't. There's a lot cut out of it. Like, it, it, like they're gonna, where is Nicolas Cage's freak out? There was no Cage freak out in this movie. Well, there kind of was. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about, like, after his son went missing, mm -hmm. and he's, like, talking. I think he's at, like, a library or something, mm -hmm. and he kind of, like, he kind of has, like, a brief freak out. Yeah, it's, uh -huh. It will not be as good as the one that was in uh, Rage. Oh, um, oh, my God. That yeah, on rooftop, scene. rooftop, yep. That was The, the rest of the movie can go eat shit and die, but, like, <laughs> that part was awesome. Dude, Actually, no, that... there were two good, two really good parts in that movie. Three, actually. Where are the, the other scene, two? The scene where the dude, where one of his friends is in the bar, and they're all getting ready to attack the bar, that was good. And then yep. the scene where him and his boys roll up on that house, that was good. Mm -hmm. That was really good. Cage with the shotgun and the knives, that was that was dope. That was. And, uh, yeah, that, that was a weird movie, though, dude. Because remember at the end, there, I don't want to spoil it, but, like, it, it, it's sort of... I guess I'm kind of, are you cool with if I, I'm not going to like say everything, but just this little sentence might spoil well, something. I don't think everyone cares about rage as much as we do. Yeah. It's a couple years old already. Right. Yeah, I mean, at least three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the part, you know, at the end when it was all for nothing, like it was all just bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, that was like the biggest fuck you to anybody that gave a shit about the movie. Right. And I was like, you just alienated the five people that probably cared, like, you know, like us. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was like, well, well, 
what? The end of this movie? They didn't do anything? Yeah, yeah. It was like, oh, are you kidding me? Like, he ruined this movie for me. I was like, okay, this... There was another one that had potential of being really good. And... Wet Balloon. Like, it's just, like, terrible. Which one? It's not... Uh, Rage. It had potential of being really good. And yeah, I, don't, I don't think they should have called it Rage. I think they should have called it the original title, Tokarev. I think a lot more people would have taken it more seriously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instead of just calling it Rage. Like, it, Nicholas, it's such a hokey name. Like, it, Plus, Nicolas Cage is the star. So there, a lot of people already don't care. Mm-hmm. And then you call it Rage? <laughs> Oh wait, but Tokarev. but let's talk about um, Hokey Pokey, and let's talk about the Hokey Pokey scene. Nicholas Cage destroys a pool table with a sledgehammer while singing the Hokey Pokey. This is in Mom and Dad. This scene was incredible. In I will even talk about Daniel Pearl's lighting in this scene because they're in a basement. Awesome, because you're only getting the lighting from windows and some of the back lighting that they're using to light the scene it looks awesome and plus cage just goes on a tirade and i'm like trying to figure out how much of this was in brian taylor's script and how much of it wasn't right it's it's one of those things where it's a long scene and there are a few different shots you know that they're cutting between but you have that feeling in the back of your head while you're watching it where you're like I feel like they just kind of let it happen. Like they were kind of just like they set up their shot and they said, go for it, do your thing. And they kind of just let him act, you know, an improv part of it, maybe, you know, ad lib this thing. He's like, you can, you can use these couple lines right here and then just go from there. I, I was fucking Brent and you were fucking Kendall. Like that was awesome. Sorry about that. It goes uh it goes from being this hilarious crazy freak out where it's like wow this dude just this just that he made <laughs> but basically uh it's like he makes this pool table, he destroys this pool table and it's hilarious while he's doing it. But then it turns into a scene of, wow, sad. That that went from, well, that the the building the table and destroying the table is also a metaphor for, you know, how he was before to how he is now. He's a Mm -hmm. broken man that doesn't feel like he's doing anything on his full potential. Right. It's, It's simple but brilliant, you know, realistically, that type of analogy. And, um, but yeah, it's just like, you're laughing at first and then as the scene goes on and it's like, this dude's like completely breaking down this like middle-aged man who's realizing like, you know, his white suburban dream isn't all that great anymore. It's just kind of like, it. we Damn. made it, we made it to what? Like, we're just mom and dad now. That's just like, Okay. I don't ever want to feel that way. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> like, you know I have a small child, so it's like, I don't ever want to be, oh, I was Zach from Cavern of Terror, and now I'm just dad. Exactly, dude. It's like, it's it's pretty, like, it's real, you know, in such a bizarre way for a movie that's so over the top, you know? It's mm-hmm. just like, it's it kind of strips down all the, the elegance and the, the wackiness of, the plot and it just puts it down to perspective of like um you know this happens to people as they grow up and <clears throat> and change and and live and experience more things in their lives and it's just like damn i don't want to be like that <laughs> right so let me ask you have you seen the babysitter the babysitter who's in that one um uh hugo weaving's uh uh niece samara weaving uh, the blonde Oh, she's oh, dude, yeah. I, 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 I did not realize that she's his niece. 
Yeah, that she's his niece. But the point, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that one on Netflix. Yeah, the ending with the car. Mm-hmm. I want to know who did it first, because there is very similar scene in Mom and Dad, right at the very end. Um, I'm kind of wondering who did that scene first because it's kind of done in reverse order in each movie. Like one movie, the car is going somewhere. In the other movie, the car is going somewhere else. But yeah, I'm kind of wondering, you know, who wrote that first and when that was used. It's used perfectly in both movies. Right. And it's completely different in both movies. But I'm kind of wondering what you think about that. Yeah, no, I didn't really give any thought. I, I didn't really make that connection. But now that you say it, I, I see what you're saying. Um, it's interesting because I feel like overall, though, too, it's not the, you know, clearly not the first two times it's happened ever in a movie. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, kind of like, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, how how do you go about it? I mean, I guess you could say they were probably – like written wise, I'm sure they were written around the same time. Like mm-hmm. I have a feeling that Mom and Dad was a movie that was shot, you know, maybe late 2016. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe not that late. Maybe more summer. Early maybe 2017. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like exactly, yeah. And and then it was kind of, you know, in that process of trying to get distribution with festivals and the whole circuit as the babysitter was probably what picked up by Netflix and there the whole time. Mm-hmm. So that probably had more of a streamline to being done on, on time when it came out in 2017. So I feel like they could have been written around the same time. I mean, but Who but knows? it is I definitely see that correlation, though. Yeah, there's not a lot of not a lot of people have touched on that. They haven't went that in depth, not as in depth as we have with it. Right. Like, can, you know, considering the reviewers that I watch, and you know, most of them have already reviewed it mm-hmm. and didn't go that far. But you know, I'm going a little bit further than most people go with a Nicolas Cage movie. Um, no worries. Yeah. Yeah, but I was super excited that they got Daniel Pearl because he's one of my favorite cinematographers. That's uh, awesome, he did, dude. Like he did Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the remake. He did um, the original Friday the 13th, I believe. Oh, damn. And, no, was it Friday the 13th? Yes, it was Friday the 13th. And he also did the Friday the 13th remake. Which That's was, pretty cool. Uh, That's cool. The to... between the director of, you know, TCM remake and Friday the 13th remake. Right. That's, yeah, that's, really, that's yeah. awesome, because... Uh, I'm more, you know, with a lot of movies, I'll pay more attention to the um, the actors, the director, maybe the writer. But then a lot of times I like to try to follow certain sound people to kind of mm-hmm. see what they're doing because there's some really great, um, bigger kind of sound mixers and designers that are doing cool stuff. In, uh, in, speaking, um, of, speaking of sound, what did you think of uh, Mr. Bill on Mom and Dad? Mr. Bill? He did the uh, the scoring. Oh, is that is that who that is? Okay, because um, I didn't know a whole lot uh, going in about Mr. Bill, but dude, I was super into the music of the movie. The pop stuff and the score stuff was really just consistently great the whole way through. It was just, you know, it's one of those, um, it's kind of like, uh, I, I'm trying to think of a movie off the top of my head that this did for me, like that did the same thing. I mean, in terms of Nicolas Cage, like um, Kick Ass was one of those movies where I was like impressed by the score. I didn't know much about it going in, about who was doing it. And then by the end, I was like, the music was one of the things that stood out like big time, whether it was Gone the in 60 pop. Seconds. Oh, Gone in 60 Seconds. Yeah, I love the lowrider part. The... Let's go steal some cars. <laughs> like that, that was awesome. The war Hell scene, yeah. perfect. Yeah, Gone in 60 Seconds is a really fun movie. Yeah, that was one of, well, a lot of what, you know, an average moviegoer would say, one of Nicolas Cage's last really good roles. But, you know, he's done, he did more good roles after that. Uh, oh, yeah. Did he do National Treasure after Gone in 60 Seconds? Yep, National Treasure. Um, what else do we got here? And he probably did Matchstick Men after that, too. 
Gone 60 Seconds was two. Yeah, Gone 60 Seconds was 2000. He also did Family Man in 2000. Um, did you like Wind Talkers? I own it and I loved it. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, that was 2002. Um, dude, um, ad Adaptation. That was 2002. Matchstick Men was 2003. National Treasure, 2004. Lord of War, 2005. The Weatherman, 2005. I love all those movies that we just said right there. Uh, he killed it in the early 2000s. Yeah, he you know, was still... A lot of people say that his height was in, 19, in the 90s, but man, he killed it in the early 2000s. I think, you know what I think happened? In 2006, The Wicker Man, I think, kind of tart... I think that tarnished him a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> I think it was a little bit more than that. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I'll be I honest with you. Before. I find that film to be very entertaining. Oh, it's fun. It's it's got a, it. It's very fun. It's not scary whatsoever. They did not do what they set out to do, but it like it's shot confidently well. Like it's it's uh, directed pretty well too. It's just the yeah. story is just is not good. Yeah, I, you know, and you know, I don't want to end it on the Wicker Man. I think we should end it on um, something that we're looking forward to from Nicolas Cage. Because, right, um, what's a movie you're looking forward to from him, or what are you looking forward to at the next Cage Corner? The next Cage Corner. I mean, I was really excited for Mom and Dad. That was like a lot of people laughed at me when I said it was my most anticipated film last year. But it didn't come out last year. But now I see all those people praising that movie. It's on the top of some of their lists. And I was like, when I tell you, Nicolas Cage, everybody laughed. And now everybody loves it. Um, I, I'm not, I want to see Nicolas Cage do another superhero film. I would love to see him do a DC film someday. Like, I don't know, because I've told you that he almost played the Scarecrow. He almost Which would have been insane. would have been great. He should have been the scarecrow. He would have been a great scarecrow. Oh, he would have been perfect, Jonathan Crane. Like, considering his body type in the mm -hmm. '90s when they were going to do that movie, he was tall and lanky and just weird, and that would have been perfect for Jonathan Crane in the '90s. Um, he almost played Constantine. He lost yeah. out to Keanu Reeves or you. And, um, <laughs> and of course, we all know that he almost played Superman. So here's a, yeah, I mean, if I could go off that last one real quick, I think they should take that script and they should make an animated film and have him voice it. I think we've talked about this. Oh, that would be so good. I think they should just do that. I mean, yeah, yeah he said he's too good. old. He doesn't see himself playing it anymore, but it's mm -hmm. like, have him voice it, dude. Like, I mean, I'd love to see Nicolas Cage, like, come out of obscurity like they did with Michael Keaton for Spider-Man Homecoming and just, like, be a character, be a badass villain in a movie for a superhero film. Personally, i like to see him play a DC character. Um, Maxwell Lord would be awesome. Love to see him play Maxwell Lord. There's a couple people, actually, Pierce Brosnan and Tom Cruise, that I'd love to see play Maxwell Lord, but I think he could pull it off. Or Hector Hammond. I'd love to see him play Hector Hammond. That'd be good. I'd love to see him play Sinestro. But, you know, those are more... He could play Hector Hammond. Sinestro, maybe maybe he's getting a little bit too old for that. Yeah. A couple, of, you know, maybe 10 years ago. But I still would I would still be up for it if they cast him though today. Um, but, but yeah. Who would you like to see him work with? Oh, who do I want to see him work with? Yeah, you you already said Snyder, but is that your pick? Um, I as much as I'd love to see him work with Snyder, I think I could. Weirdly enough, um, okay. Uh, I loved Raising Arizona. It's like one of my favorite movies. I would love to see him do something with Coen Brothers again, like a comedy. I okay. I think if if they made another comedy with Nicolas Cage as the lead. No relation to Raising Arizona. It's own thing, completely own thing. I think it would be great. I would love to see them do something with him again. I mean, I'd love, I'd love to see Nicolas Cage. This isn't my pick, but I'd love to see Nicolas Cage work with Scorsese again. Or, oh my God, could you imagine if Nicolas Cage worked with David Lynch? Well, he did what, Wild at Heart? 
Is yeah. that the one that he again. did with him? Yeah, but if he did something again, yeah. yeah again. Dude. Or with David Cronenberg. I'd love to see oh. more with Cronenberg because he did Wonders with James Woods. I'm, yeah, with James Woods and um, uh, Christopher Walken in the Dead Zone. Mm-hmm. Like, really, really awesome performances. But, like, you might laugh. He's worked with him before, but it really wasn't, like, a, a big thing. I would love to see Nicolas Cage work with Rob Zombie. Like, I would love to see him work with Rob Zombie on a full feature film. Like, like he did S- uh, Wh- Where- Werewolf Woman of the SS. Uh, it was that fake trailer. Uh-huh. But, like, it, it... Uh, Nicolas Cage is just, like, a, a gas station attendant or something in a, in a Rob Zombie movie. I'm down. That would be awesome, dude. That would be really fun. I'm so down. So unequivocally down for that. Well, dude, let's um, let's uh next week let's talk about some of the movies coming out this year from him, and we'll we'll go back and talk about more stuff, uh, like we've been kind of today too. But okay, um, really down with that. I am down. We're talking about future Nicolas Cage movies. Yeah, and past, yeah, past, present, and future. Out. Yeah, yeah dude. a lot of stuff coming out this year. I think the quite a few. Of- yeah, there's a few, quite a few. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, dude, thanks for joining me. Um, this has been a, a blast. I'm so excited to keep doing this. Um, you know, uh, do your homework and keep watching uh, Nicolas Cage movies, right? Oh, my God. You know, I'm 55 and counting. <laughs> I still need to pick up um, – uh, what's that last one that he just did? Uh, Vengeance. Vengeance. Oh, yeah, Vengeance. Vengeance. Yeah, it, It's available on Amazon, but I still haven't picked it up yet, but I will. Yeah, I gotta get a few. I'm, a, I'm, you know, I, I'm a few behind with the new ones, but um, I'm looking forward to getting mom and dad. And oh, I'll be getting that February twentieth. Yep, first I'm day. The days. It's coming up, dude. Um, but yeah, yeah dude. We'll so, be at Best Buy. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll keep in touch, and uh, we'll do one of these again soon. That'll be fun. All right. Thank you, anyone who uh, is happening to watch it now or watch it later. Um, you know, we're just talking about one of our favorite actors ever and no apologies the beast <laughs> no apologies the beast. <laughs> but yeah thank you guys um everybody have a good night get home safe uh goodbye thank you zach no problem yeah so